Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Charles and you are watching Charles Salbox TV. So for sure you guys have already seen the thumbnail and video title and in today's video we're going to focus on how to fight against a taller fighter. Now this is a common problem in boxing so today's video is surely going to help a lot of boxers with a few problems that they have in the gym. So let's get straight into it. So to begin with, when we are facing a taller fighter, we need to first of all understand the perspective of the taller fighter so we can build a game plan around their movements and their mindset. So we know that the taller fighter has the advantage of height and more than likely range also. So we can assume those two things. Now, when the taller fighter has the advantage of range, that means that they will be able to hit us before we're able to hit them. Now, when we're dealing with the psychology of a taller fighter, we know that in the gym, they're more likely to be training to fight at range. Now, for the taller fighter, they will always be targeting our head first because as the taller fighter, our head is closer. Our target will be the torso. Now, the variable that we see there is range as the shorter fighter. We can't really do too much about the psychology, but what we do know is that if we vary range, that specific displacement where he's able to land his punches more effectively, then he will become more frustrated. So where we will take the initiative as the shorter fighter is to vary range constantly. This will likely result in a greater amount of uncertainty that the taller fighter has with identifying his own range and becoming aware of when we slide into his range. So within this video, I will show you many ways that you can vary range. Now, to begin with, we will start in the stationary position. When we're in front of our opponent, there are many things that we can do. We can slip to the right and to the left. Okay, so first of all, in the left direction, we rotate the back foot to the right. Again, demonstrate that. And then I'll turn on the side, demonstrate that. Okay, here. Okay, and now I'll demonstrate slipping to the right. Okay, all we do is rotate the back foot inwards, bring it down to the floor, and we're in a very comfortable position here. Okay, so I'll turn out to the side, there. Watch the back foot rotate on the inside. Okay, so those are basic slips that we can do on the spot. Now, also what we can do is just basic out steps. So from this position, we can vary our range in this still stationary position by taking a step out to the side, step out to the side, step backwards, okay? There, there, okay, there. So we're technically in the same position. Now, when we take a step forward, we consider that more as a feint, okay? There, okay? So a step forward, we consider that more as a feint. So when we step out to the side, to the right, out step there, out step there, out step there, okay? When we step inwards, we obviously bring our body closer and it looks more like a feint, okay? It looks like on the approach to more of an attack. So those are also ways that we can vary range. And remember, this is in the stationary position. Now, another way that we can vary range is to change our height, okay? So change our height like this, okay? Just dip, okay? And also with dipping, we can weave or roll, okay? So remember, we dip and then we roll, okay? Both ways, okay? From the side, we dip, we roll. Both sides, just a small circle. Again, we dip, and then we roll. Okay, so those are things that you can do in the stationary position. Also with the torso, you can see that there's a, a great deal of emphasis that I place on the feet and the legs for those particular moves, okay? Obviously with the torso, with the rolling, um, that's something that occurs, but also we have a lean, okay, and then a pull. So we can lean forward, bringing our head 
to our lead foot, but not beyond. Okay, that's where we lose balance. Okay, so again, we lean. Okay, it's almost like presenting the target. So we've got our weight on the back foot, then we lean, then we come back, okay? We lean, then we come back. Okay, the next thing that we can do, we can pull, okay? So we pull, okay? Pull back, okay? Pull back. Obviously, what we can do with the pull is actually step back as well, okay? Making it easier, easier for us to retract from the back. So here, without the step, and then with the step, okay, these are all ways that we can change the displacement from the taller fighter. So first of all, without the step, then with the step, okay, so in general, all of these things we can do whilst moving, okay? so. To begin with, in the frontal plane, we have moving forwards and backwards, and then moving in the lateral direction, we have slips. So first of all, we can slip whilst moving on the lead foot, either to the left or to the right. So here, there, 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 okay? Coming backwards, again, we can slip to the left or the right on the lead foot. Okay, okay, so now we can slip moving forwards and backwards on the rear foot, okay. Okay, now moving backwards, we can slip on the rear foot, moving to the left and to the right. So beginning with the left, In the lateral plane, we can also slip to the left and right. So just from here, we slip going to the left on the lead foot, and then we slip going to the right on the lead foot. Okay, now moving to the right, we can slip on the right foot. We just turn the back foot slightly, ever so slightly. Okay, now we can slip on the right foot going to the left, both in the left and right direction. Okay, so you can see that whilst I am moving, my head is moving left and right as I do this, okay? So now we can slip left and right on the left foot. So here. So we can perform dips whilst moving forwards. So there. Moving backwards. Okay, and you can see that I'm constantly changing the position of my head when I'm doing this. So in the lateral plane, we can also dip and move. That's another way that we can create variations within our movement. So we can go down, take the step, take a step over, come up. Down, there, down, there, down, there. Now going to the other direction. Down there, down there, down there, down there, okay? Now these are all different variations in which we can move to create a different displacement with range and also with our head, okay? Now our head is going to be the primary target for the taller opponent solely because our head is closer to the fist of our opponent, so this is where we differ as the shorter fighter. We will be trying to land punches 
to the torso. So another way in which the shorter fighter can vary range is with footwork. Push steps and paso pendulo are the easiest ways to do that. So we can push forwards and then we can push back. These quick shifts in displacement will cause the taller fighter severe problems if he believes when we approach, we're going to attack and then we retract and then he misses a punch. That also enables us to counter attack in certain situations. So here, ba, 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 okay. Also Paso Pendulo, just here. This is where we create a constant change in range, not allowing our opponent to understand where we are, okay? And as we are closer to the ground, we can move the head, okay? And we, as the shorter fighter, will always have some advantages with the limbs, the control of limbs for combinations, quicker combinations, faster feet, and greater agility, just being closer to the floor, the center of mass is slightly closer to the floor. So these advantages, the shorter fighter needs to hone within the gym. Obviously, we have the basic things that we can do on the spot. We have the technical skills that we can apply with movement, so i.e. slips, rolls, and um, dips, whilst moving left, forwards, backwards. And then we need to have a means of attacking our opponent. Now, I did say the primary target for the shorter fighter is the torso of the taller fighter. Just think of chopping a tree down. That is essentially what we're aiming to do when we attack the taller fighter. Now, when we approach the point at which we are at our range to attack, and we've sufficiently done many of the things to vary range so we can subtly come into range, what we want to do is attack the body. We want the taller opponent to be preoccupied with um, the possibility of an attack to his head, but our actual intended area is the torso. And we want to use deception to convey this. So the way I go about doing this, I telegraph many feints to his head. So if I'm approaching my taller fighter from the side, I want to feint at his head, feint with the right hand, show him some hooks, feint, boom, okay? And then attack with a push from the rear foot, go into the torso, okay? Remember, I feint, boom, and then I come forward. Feint, show him the hook, the right hand, maybe step out to the side, create some confusion there, feint, Bah, okay, then go to the torso. Now, once we attack, we want to evade and then go back to our old tactic of changing the range constantly. Now, this would be so important because in order to, for us to land maybe a second blow to the torso, we want to perform the same movements, okay? So, again, change in position there, okay? Slip in. Slip in there, okay, rolling, dip, change in position, okay, then fainting as we come into range, bah, okay, and then they're back again, there, there, paso pendulo, okay, moving around, changing the head position, okay, boom, fainting again, bah, okay, going back to the torso. Now, when we've done this sufficiently, I attack the body, then we want to attack the head. So I have a clip to demonstrate how a shorter fighter attacked the body in a similar style, and then when the hands went down to defend the body on another attack, which he fainted, he then switched the attack to the head and then scored the knockdown. Okay guys, we've come to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed the breakdown of how to fight against the taller fighter. Now, obviously, this video is set out to help shorter fighters 
but it indirectly helps taller fighters because you know what the approach for a short fighter when you're going up against him. Please share the video around because it's going to help a lot of fighters to improve their game plans and strategic approaches when facing against a taller or shorter fighter. If you like the video, please hit that like button. And if you have any comments or suggestions about future videos, please leave them within the comment section. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay informed of any new videos that I'm uploading to the channel. Right, until my next video, keep training, stay safe, and make sure you know how to fight against a taller fighter. Peace.